Take hello us in. and welcome. Hi. Welcome. I hello. <laughs> hello and welcome to the official podcast. It is your typical three men on the show today. As always, we have only ever had three hosts, as it has always been. They you have myself, Andrew, you have Charlie, you have Kaya. Normally our recurring guest Jackson would be joining us, but uh what was that thing he said in that nasty email he sent us this morning? It was like paragraphs and paragraphs. It was like, you guys don't respect me on the show. Mm. You really just undermine my opinions. I can't take it anymore. Gave an address for some reason. That we don't take his ADHD just, uh, seriously. He gets triggered a lot. That we ignore his triggers and limits. And his safe words apparently and some such stuff. He's been going... He's the been biggest thing was sensory overload. I think oh that was yeah, really yeah. He said he said all the clap syncing was getting like he was hearing it in his dreams. Mm. I don't. I couldn't I, escape it. He's been moving in some weird t Tumblr circles, if that's still a thing. If not, then he's moving Yard. in some weird Twitter circles. <laughs> I think he's, he's bringing back some weird Tumblr circles so he can move in them. Mm. So what have you guys been up to this past week? Well, hmm. same old, same old, except Andrew and I are in a horror movie. Ooh. Oh, we can talk about that now? I mean, Tell us. Yeah, I can't go into super detail, but I mean, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, then shut up about it. When is it coming out? <laughs> uh, hopefully at the end of the year. Yeah. Okay, how very about... Optimistic very optimistic release is Halloween, but hopefully, at least by end of the year okay without giving away too much how big of a role is it, it it's not you again in the background waving and then getting cut out is no. It? no 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 no, no, no we play we play sizable chunks not like main characters but in total probably like what would you say andrew 20 30 minutes of screen time for the two characters uh probably a little less it's to some, be honest somewhere in that ballpark though yeah uh, i would say that we're featured characters like a little more than a cameo but definitely not, like, the main cast, you know? Okay, how about we, a week before it comes out, we do the Rogan thing, and we interview the two of you on the podcast. <laughs> a really sweet. Oh, that'd be cool. And pretend You'll that you're actual movie agent. stars. Well, I'm your agent, aren't I? Well, uh, well, if you're okay with it, I suppose <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> I accept the offer. I'm your agent now. Kaya, will you let your clients come on an interview? Of course, Kaya. There you go. Bureaucracy oh, okay. can be solved easy when you're the one dictator. So we'll, well interview Kaya you. Says it's okay. I did say it's okay. So is it one of the sucky horror movies, or is it gonna be actually good, or is it one of those ironically funny ones? Well, optimistically, it'll be a good one. Yeah, it, it, definitely. From what I've seen, it's not going to be like shitty. They have an actual plan and an actual professional crew and they're actually like the the filming is being done seriously they're getting good shots and actually taking a lot of care now if the final edit will say be tongue-in-cheek or self-aware to some degree i don't know but it definitely doesn't look like it's just going to be a forgettable piece of shit like you often see just <laughs> out of nowhere you know okay so would you i'm not trying to shit on this and i don't want you guys to shit on it but would you rather this be a comp an amazing movie that gets a 100% ro on Rotten Tomatoes, but you know only ever it only ever has a teeny tiny cult following, or would you rather it make millions and millions and millions of dollars, but it's considered the room? You were talking. Oh, that'd be Brazil great. Now. I'd, lo really? I'd love yeah. to be part of something like that. Yeah, I've always said that. Being part of like a disaster movie, oh, that'd be incredible. Absolutely. But what if that made you, this one one hit, ironically terrible wonder, made you also unhirable? Again. <laughs> and so, so we got typecasted as that, like, oh, it's the yeah. guys from that movie. Yeah. Oh, that's a good question. I'd be fine with it. Really? I think yeah. it'd be okay. Okay. I don't know. Well, look at, uh, look at Tommy Wiseau now. Like, the room took off like that. And he's getting tons of offers from people to like do small other indie movies and be in their cameos and their movies and shit. It's like even if you get typecasted as that, you can still do other stuff. Yeah, true. But he's sort of a freak show, isn't he? Don't they like get him on well, stuff yeah. for the sake of the same way they get, you know, morbidly obese or midget people on shows so the audience can kind of laugh at them? 
The difference with that, though, is that Tommy was so's a fucking weirdo and does weird shit. And As has opposed that to really us, to you guys, to who exactly? <laughs> <laughs> I think Tommy was so cross as a line that we don't into, like, actual weirdo. I don't know. Uh, I don't know, I mean, man. It's hard to say for sure. I mean, he, even if we go with the caveman instinct levels, like he has an indecipherable accent. No one knows where he's from. That alone is going to put him in some movies. You know what I'm saying? Right. Mm, I guess. Okay, well, we'll see. We have a whole audience, so I hope that our audience will review bomb the pot, uh, the movie in a good way. Whatever that it's called <laughs> when it's review bombed. And review I boosted hope, would be my guess yeah i okay. hope at the very least they'll watch it and form their own opinion the positive reviews would be nice but i'd, I'd like to know what people actually think of it <laughs> haven't seen it yet five stars <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> <laughs> those are the reviews i care about to be updated uh, okay can i talk about something that really weirds me out am i I can't be the only one, but is it unusual for people to not pay attention to lyrics? Do you guys do that? Because one of the things I get mm -hmm. so often is people, you know, I'll say I like a song or I'll be playing something on Spotify and say, hey, that, that's a cool song. And my girlfriend or someone will immediately jump in like, you like this song, Kaya? You don't know what she's saying? She's saying that the patriarchy is destroying women and all men need to be killed. I wouldn't thought that you would like this. And all I can think is I didn't fucking listen to the lyrics. I just I, I like the melody. I like how the words sound, I guess, but I don't listen to it. That's that's not uncommon. That's why a lot of people like mumble rap. They have no fucking idea what's being said, but yeah. they like the way it sounds. Very often when I hear a song that I like and I want to sing along, I'll just sing what like sounds I hear rather than the actual <laughs> words. Yeah, the phonetics. Because a lot of the time I have no idea what they're actually saying, so I'll just sing like fucking caveman grunts that sound like those words. <laughs> <laughs> or just make up a phrase that's similar to it, like misheard lyrics? Pretty much, pretty oh, yeah. much. And I have like one or two favorite songs to which I know the lyrics, kinda, sorta, but when I want to find a song or play a song and the person asks me, oh, so look it up on Sound Lyric or whatever the, those websites are, and I go, I, I don't fucking know the lyrics. It goes, hum, 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 ba, 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 and it's a, it has a cool drum in it. Mm -hmm. So that's me. Yeah, I... I, I uh, I was just wondering yeah. if at this point I was disabled or something for not paying attention to lyrics. I, I like this comment in the live chat a lot, and I think it speaks to what you and I and all of us are talking about, where treating vocals is another instrument. I think that opens up a lot of music. Because yeah. just if you overanalyze a song's lyrics, I mean, a lot of songs are dumb. Like, uh, let's be honest, especially like mainstream pop songs. A oh, lot of the terrible. lyrics are stupid and terrible and poorly written and uneventful but if you treat them as just part of the melody just like the the vocals need words just to have something to say just so you can sing something i think songs like get a lot better with that perspective they're pleasant overall. sounds that's all it is and it's not even exactly the, it's i mean again the, the befuddlement that people sometimes look at me like oh you like kesha you like ariana grande you like this or that yeah, I guess I like the sounds they make, not the message. I know they're all a bunch of vapid bimbos. It's not like I, it's not as if I respect them as philosophers or songwriters, not to mention that all of their songs are written by like 15 other producers, but it's just fun sounds. So I'm glad to see that I'm did not we, the only one. Did we ever tell you that Charlie and I had that exact opinion of you when we first met you? That I was. When you definitely uh, we, talked that about I'm a that, vapid yeah. bimbo? I, no, well, yes, yes. <laughs> we've always no, we've always known that that uh, when you first visited us in America, we were incredibly shocked that your music taste was like top forty, for the most part. Yeah, we I had no idea. I don't. Nor even, did we expect it. Well, like when I play again, I don't know Kesha. You're surprised. They're fun. Yeah, honestly, they're fun. They're fun. I like Pink. My playlist is full of shit, from death metal to Pink, and. Fuck me, do I not listen to the lyrics? Other than Pink's, I think, like, it's time to party, party, or whatever the fuck that song is called. It's, see, again, I can't even remember. All I know is when I'm in a good mood, I like listening to it. It's about parties. It's a party song. That's fair. Let's get yeah. this party started, I mean, there's nothing. Called. There's nothing in any way wrong with that. I still, to this day, crank out a shitload of, like, Backstreet Boys and Britney Spears on my playlist just because I think that music is fucking amazing. No, you should. Yeah. 
there's nothing wrong with music taste. It's completely and utterly subjective. But at the same time, I don't think it's... I wouldn't go as far as to say the lyrics are worth actually paying attention to on a lot of those songs. No, they're not. Like I said, there's like maybe two or three songs where I like like the lyrics and I know them, but that's about it. The rest is... I just go by ear. Okay, another thing. I want to know where... I want to know if I'm the weird one. I'm serious. Uh, yesterday I sat down and I seriously looked up salt shaker holsters on Amazon. Because at this point, like I feel like I've... Yeah. Because like at this point, I hip? seriously wow. feel like I have to carry around a salt shaker like a tampon or something. Because no matter what restaurant I go to, they always under salt shit. And some, some restaurants don't even have salt shakers. Where the fuck did this shit start? When I was younger, I remember every restaurant had salt shakers on every table. Now... Either it's, you know, it's like every other table has one, or you have to request one, or sometimes you request one, and then they get offended. L as if mm. you just have insulted mm -hmm. their amazing uh, condiment skills or something. That No, I just like salt. I like it saltier. Your fucking dish isn't bad, but I'd like salt. Can't I choose? Again, am I the only one here? Customer... Well, yeah, I've never had that problem. It's America, Kaya. There's salt, sugar, <laughs> uh, fucking MSG... High fructose corn syrup. You could have all these shakers on your table if you want. <laughs> Not here. I, I, I want to go why. to a restaurant and they have a they have a giant gallon drum of high fructose corn syrup on the table <laughs> for you to put on shit. <laughs> and we're not far off. It flows from the water. You can just we're really not. On. We're really not, man. In a similar vein, I've started cooking at home a lot more recently and just making my own food. It kind of blows my fucking mind. Let's say let's say I'll make like salmon with rice. And I'll look at it and I'll crunch the numbers and I'll go, I could eat this entire giant fucking plate and it'll be about 700 calories around mm. there, give or take. Then you go to a restaurant, you order salmon with like rice and, and maybe an extra veggie or something. And it's like 1800 calories. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know how the fuck they do it. It's kind of insane. Sugar. I don't understand it. I bet you there's a conspiracy theory in my mind that... You know, they put sugar in everything, even shit like salmon and chicken or something. I, I don't know what, but they put it in it. When you get a smoothie... I wouldn't be surprised. I bet that if you go to the world's healthiest smoothie shop and order nothing but a veggie smoothie where it's nothing but lettuce and carrots, they're still gonna sneak in a cube of sugar. I betcha. Yeah. Yeah. That's another one that always kills me. Smoothies? I love smoothies. I'm a big fan of smoothies. I could drink one every single day. But every single fucking restaurant, for the most part, that has them, their smoothies are like a third added sugar. And it's like, fruit's already sweet. It's got sugar in it. Why right. do you need more? What the fuck? Right. Ugh. It's such a, it's such a, Kaya, in some way, you've got it good, even if you can't, like, get your added salt and shit. Because at least your food, when it says healthy, for the most part, is usually healthy. Man. Whereas in America, even the healthy food isn't healthy. Well, okay, so what what is healthy food for you guys? Because you guys also, for the most part, have the ultra-healthy stuff that no one in their right mind would want to eat, like soy burgers and Whoa, fucking actually, cockroaches you and should, shit. You should definitely try, well, like, a, not a soy burger in particular, but, like, Impossible Burgers and Beyond Burgers. Those things yeah. absolutely slap. They are. Well, I'm down They're to pretty try fucking that, good. But I meant more so those little hipster cafes where they serve you cockroach pudding, you know, because oh, right, you should yeah. stop eating meat and this is healthier anyway, and yada yada, and this is fucking soy extracts on top of lettuce juice. That sort of stuff, we don't really have a lot of that in Europe, whereas you guys, mm -hmm. seem, there seems to be a niche, at least in like your more coastal towns. You guys also have that, uh... <laughs> What was that one craze you guys had for a while? The rich people where they were drinking water, but it was unsanitized water? Raw water. Raw, Raw water. water. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you guys got that sort of shit, for example. That is just weird. Yum, yum, yum. We God, filtered that shit for a fucking reason. water. Yeah. Other than that, though, yeah, eating in is always healthier, Andrew. And you know what's in it. Yeah. You know the portions. Like, my... Uh, but even then, like my biggest complaint is, say, for example, you'll have a you'll have a restaurant that claims to be like healthy food. Like it says, you know, we, we serve healthy food. We have wraps and smoothies and and light sandwiches and this and that. And then you look at the menu and it's like, OK, the, the turkey sandwich, 950 calories. 
It's are like, your, how do you even do that at a fucking health restaurant? Are your restaurants required to list the calories? They're they, not required to, but they, they normally do. Yeah, most websites you can find it, at least on their web... Yeah, but uh, most restaurants you can find it at least on their website. Some places have it at the actual store as well. It was all part of um, back in the like 2000s, back when there was that big kick of like our food's fucking unhealthy and we don't even know what's in it. Do you guys remember that big that big like cultural shift back when McDonald's was under huge fire because they yeah. were just like, what the fuck's in the food? It's terrible for you. And eventually McDonald's put like nutrition labels on the fries Not and just shit. That. I think the catos was that somebody sued either McDonald's or some other fast food outlets for making them fat. Because the arguments was well, that uh, McDonald's didn't offer salads, and so McDonald's kind of got strong-armed into putting salads onto their menus. Or is that an urban myth? A big, uh, a big part of it was Super Size Me, and documents like that came out, or mm -hmm. documentaries like that came out. And what's kind of funny is later, Super Size Me was found to be kind of like fluffed up and definitely over-exaggerated in a lot of ways. In what way? But, I mean, as far as that kind of shit goes, it's pretty on the money. I forgot what it was. There was some other documentary that actually came out called Fathead that actually is just a critique of Super Size Me and proves that... I don't, I don't remember the exact claim on it, but he was saying that, like, you can have an actual successful diet through McDonald's. Yeah. It's just I, I know Morgan's it's rules less. set him up to fail. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, if you eat <laughs> less, that, there was a whole thing with Jared from Subway, the pedophile, remember? Subway's mascot mm -hmm. pedophile. Mm -hmm. Where he claimed that he lost weight eating nothing but Subway, which, you know, it works if you eat only one Subway sandwich a week and nothing else. Of course, you're going to lose weight. There was also another professor, I think, who all on his own decided to prove that you can not only live, but actually lose weight on a pure Twinkie diet. And all yep. he did was... <laughs> the he, Twinkie diet. He kept below the calorie limit, below his daily calorie yep. limit, and that was it. Yeah, you can do that. I cite the Twinkie diet all the time because I fucking love that. The guy wanted to prove that calories in, calories out was pretty much the only thing that mattered for weight loss. So he ate nothing but Twinkies and multivitamins and just counted his calories and lost weight and was at, uh, monitored to be healthy when it was all done. So that's yeah, why that I, think, I right. love that. Yeah. Charlie? I said that sounds about right. Yeah. Why did you call on me like it was a class presentation? All I said was it sounds about right. <laughs> I, I, I didn't hear what you said. I wanted to. I was. I wasn't. I didn't mean to be like Charlie. Do you have something to say? I just wanted to be like Charlie. I didn't hear you. It's so nice that oh, we well. no longer have to do class presentations or homework. This week mm -hmm. here, oh, where I live, yeah. the school started back up, and all the kids. You know, they're, they're like at the beach on the weekends trying to get the last few days of their freedom uh, to try and squeeze some joy out of the their last few days without school. And all I can think is looking at them, all these fucking teenagers, is I'm so happy I'm not you anymore. The fucking yeah. awkward teenage phase yeah. where I have to go to school and write essays and then uh, present shit in front of a class of jaded, apathetic assholes, all of whom are just like me, apathetic assholes trying to stumble I'm, through a speech i'm most uh i'm most thankful in that vein to just never have homework again mm. ever mm. that feeling of just you do something all day say you sit down and go i'm gonna work on this project or do this thing i want to learn or i have to do the podcast today we'll do that and then when it's done it's done i i don't have to say oh but later i have to do this too or oh i have to do this part of it as a, an extra assignment it's like nah you get your thing done, you're just done. There's no there's no extra, oh, by the way, do this when you get home. I love it. It's <laughs> such a good feeling. Being an adult is so much better than being some kind of milk-drinking kid. <laughs> fucking losers. Yeah, fucking... If you're a milk-drinking kid, listen to this. You're a nerd. Do your fucking homework. It is, though. I Fuck mean... Fuck you. All the, all the old people reminiscing to being young. You didn't like being young and... Well, you liked being young, but you don't like all the stuff that came with it. You just liked having a youthful body where you could fall over off a skateboard and then literally heal like Wolverine within two seconds. That's the part you liked. Yeah. You didn't like actually all the adults in your life telling you what to do at all times of the day. You didn't like having a 8 p.m. curfew or being told that you can't have ice cream for dinner. Fuck you. Yeah, I can. I'm an adult now. I'm almost 30. You know what I had for dinner yesterday? It was popcorn. Staring at my gigantic screen and that's the kind of luxury you have. That's right. Yeah. I in no way want to go back to being a kid. I have nostalgia for a lot of things, and I miss a lot of things, but I think 
right now, everything's way, way better. Oh, mm. for sure. <laughs> Having your own wallet, your own money, your own place. It is just a luxury. And so I really... I, I don't know. Like, the worst curse you could ever put on someone would be never to grow old. That Peter Pan shit. That always sounded like a curse, not a magical spell. That motherfucker never grows old. That's a curse. You're always gonna be, what, five foot tall? That yeah, that'd suck, were... right? Oh, yeah, that would terrible. suck. <laughs> you can never do any goddamn adult things ever. <laughs> they can't do adult things at five foot. <laughs> can't ride roller coasters. <laughs> can't shop for alcohol or cigarettes or anything. Can't have sex. Can't drive. Can't vote. Can't do anything. You can just sit yeah. down oh, and no, watch Oh, no, not anime. voting. Don't take away my voting, please. I my favorite that, adult but... pastime. <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm, I'm giving you shit. I know, but I mean, most but people... speaking would... of... Uh, Go ahead. Speaking of five foot, there's another sort of five that I think I need to tell everyone about, and that would be Fiverr. The way tell that me. we work together seemingly changed overnight. And if there's one thing we've learned, it's having access to the right resources can be essential for your own business or your projects, or your hobbies, or anything. Networking and knowing people is so helpful for everything in your daily life. 2020 has been a year of uncertainty. So how can your business plan for the unexpected? Whether you're launching your first business, scaling your current business, or in need of extra support to complete a project, Fiverr's global network of on-demand freelance talent is here to help. You can find what you're looking for instantly. You can easily customize your search by service, deadline, price, seller reviews, and more. There's 24-hour customer service, and there's no more guessing games. You'll know exactly what you're paying for right up front. Fiverr provides you a network of quality talent you can count on, and I'll go ahead and drop the semantics. I've been using Fiverr a lot lately in the last two or three weeks. I play guitar but I'm not a very seasoned musician yet, so I'll hear a song and I'll go, huh, I want to learn this. There's no tabs of it on the internet. No one has charted out this song for me to learn. No one's made a guide on how to play it. I have hired some musicians in the last couple weeks to write me music tabs and charts and plug it all in for me and teach me music. It's fucking great. That's a really He's good use fiber. of fiber. That's really, that's yeah. really creative. Yeah. Seriously, just go on Fiverr, type in... It, the way I look at Fiverr is if you need something, if you need someone who can help you with something, just go on Fiverr and search it. They will probably have it. A lot of people assume Fiverr is mostly like business stuff, like, oh, I can design a website, or, oh, I can make you a, help you write a resume. Nah, man, there's a ton of artists on there who will teach you how to draw, they'll teach you music, they'll teach you instruments, they're singing coaches... There's all sorts of stuff on Fiverr. If you need to learn something or need help with something, Fiverr is legitimately a great place to find people to help you do it. I've been doing it for the last couple of weeks. And you can get a little fun discount code. We can help you get that by going to Fiverr.com. That's F-I-V-E-R-R.com and receiving 10% off your first order with code OFFICIAL. F-I-V-E-R-R dot com code official for 10% off of your first order. That's F-I-V-E-R-R Fiverr dot com code official. Again, it's not just limited to business. It's not just limited to services. If you need help with something, if you want to learn something and be taught something, if you just want another person to say, hey, man, I can do that for you. Fiverr's a great website for it. I... I very much recommend Fiverr. Thank you. Mm -hmm. In fact, Kaya, you know, uh, you remember Major Parkinson? Mm -hmm. That band you got me into? Mm -hmm. I've been sending them uh, songs by them. Because uh, <laughs> you've been sending the band their own songs? <laughs> no, no. Sending people, musicians on Fiverr, their songs. Because <laughs> nowhere on the internet... Do they uh, have them charted out? So mm. I wanted a couple of their songs written out. Mm. So, so that's a yeah. bit of Fiverr. On Fiverr, you can even just find people to pay just to make them listen to songs just for fun. <laughs> yeah, I was like, look how good they are. You could pay some money. You could pay someone probably five bucks just to make them listen to a song and then have an opinion <laughs> for you. Also, if the school is also starting around there and some parts of America, you know, Fiverr. I'm not saying you should have other people do your homework. I'm just saying that if you need a little bit of assistance, perhaps reading a long and boring book, 
and having an assessment written, why not? Mm -hmm. If you need help with anything where you can get that help online, Fiverr is just a great resource. I love it. Mm -hmm. Do you guys but, think uh, that's... back on topic to... Oh, go ahead. Nah, you go ahead. I was just going to bring us back to the whole kid thing because while we were thinking about it, what are some other things that, like people to get nostalgic over from childhood that actually suck. Do you have any? <laughs> TV shows. Everyone's like, oh, oh Dragon Ball, Naruto, yada yada, and then we'll watch it. It fucking sucks ass, dude. It does Naruto episodes and episodes up. of... Huh? Naruto holds up if you skip the 51% of the show being filler. Oh, it is. So my girlfriend is forcing me to watch it, and in return I get to force her to watch good shows like Monk. But, so, <laughs> we're <laughs> oh, watching... Monk! We're I haven't heard Monk in a long time. What it's Kai brings up show. Monk like once every six months. What do you mean? It's not yeah. like really. Yeah, I it's only know of Monk through still. Kaya. Yeah. Well, it's a jungle out there. I don't know. It's a jungle out there. Yeah. And um, what was I saying? Yeah, the first Naruto. That's the one we're watching right now. Like eight episodes in. It's mm -hmm. insufferable. It is literally. I think some episodes start at the ten minute mark. Because it's two minutes of intro, and then they give you a five-minute recap, and then there's like yeah. five minutes of flashbacks throughout the episode. So the episode, yep. the entire video file is like 25 minutes or so, or 20 minutes, but literally 20, 10 minutes of it are reused scenes. The voice acting sucks ass, and Naruto is the most insane. First of all, Naruto is drawn like a racist Asian caricature, where he always has those fucking slanty eyes. And that doof, doofy uh, grin on his face that makes you just hate him and get annoyed at him. He has a stupid voice and he goes, I'll do it. Believe it. Every five seconds. Oh, you're watching the dub? Yeah. You're watching it in English? Good. That's the best way to watch it because the believe it's <laughs> will grate on you instantly. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> everything, <the best. laughs> everything grates on me, man. It's like uh, five minutes Ooh. of recaps and everything. Like I said, it, it's a terrible, terrible show, and I'm hoping that it will get better at some point. But yeah, that's another thing, in my opinion, that people get nostalgic about, where you you don't really remember the show that you watch, man. You just remember how you felt watching a show. And as a kid, no matter what you watch, it's gonna, you're going to like it. It's not like you have a standard. So you think that, oh, Beyblade was a great show. No, it sucked. It was, it was a shitty fucking co commercial made to sold you plastic spinny toys. Kaya, you should, uh, there's actual in-depth guides on the internet of which episodes of Naruto to skip because they're filler. You should look yeah. one up and, like, try to convince her to use one. Just because Naruto is notorious for having just completely useless episodes. <laughs> Everything about Naruto seems useless. That one pink bitch, I forgot her name. I don't know if it's Sasuke, Sakura, Sasuke, Jin, Jitsu, Jitsu, whatever the fuck. I, like I said, I think we're 15 episodes in. I've not seen her do anything yet. There's a main character oh, in the show who, who's will. not done anything. <laughs> Why? You never will see her do anything. Is, yep. is that true? Does she never actually step into the... All she ever does is sit on the sidelines. Sometimes gets condescended by, by the dude with the schlumpy clothing and the gray hair. Like, no, she's a female ninja. And sometimes, even for a female ninja, she can be skillful. She, she's useful, even though she's female. <laughs> it's like seems to be 90% of the dialogue surrounding her. And then her having well, a Well, it is a pretty big deal. Yeah. Now, Naruto very quickly becomes a Naruto Sasuke circle jerk. It's always like Sasuke has his little his little arc of, oh, am I bad? I don't know. And then they calm him down and then Naruto has to fight big bad villain. And then this cycle repeats until the show ends. So also, I've noticed it's the exact same story arc or not story arc, but I guess premise of Dragon Ball, right? The first Dragon Ball, the first Naruto is them as kids. And it's and it's bad and boring. It's mostly four kids. And then they have an adult version, like Dragon Ball Z, Naruto Shippuden, or whatever it's called. And then, you know, that generation ages, so now they have to sell more toys and cartoons. So they come up with Boruto and Dragon Ball GT, where it's their children now. And their dads are too old to fight or whatever. Well, GT was notoriously, like, shitty. I barely had the original creator involved, and just, I don't think anyone really likes GT, except for a few episodes or moments. Mm. No, GT is just pretty hated. Yeah. That's, but, my, um, that's my contribution. Yeah. Cartoons, what else we got? Well, I, I wanted to dogpile on the cartoon thing and not necessarily go towards anime, but go towards regular cartoons. 
because there are so many shows that a lot of people don't remember as a kid that they watched that were just absolute shit and completely forgettable. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like we always nostalgia over like the big ones, like Courage Cowardly, like the good ones, you know, Courage Cowardly Dog and Ed and Eddie. But think back to when you were a kid and you were actually watching cartoons all day. How many cartoons came on that were just absolute horse shit that you don't even remember the names of today? Yeah, I mean, where they'd have like one or two episodes and try it. And it was just like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I know what you're talking about, because I don't have to be a, even remember back to my childhood to know that. You can just look at Netflix today. There's so many cartoons that, you know, for a fact, no ass on the planet is ever going to sit down and watch. Yet again, there is a million cartoons on Netflix. Each only live one season. And it's usually this. You know where they try to sneak in cell shaded 3D animation or try to pretend it's 2D cartoons? That lazy ass trick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot of that. I don't know. What do you guys think is uh, children of today are going to look back on as, man, that actually sucked 30 years from now? Fortnite. Really? Mm. I think so. Yeah, Fortnite's just. Like, his every no kids are winning Fortnite games. You don't have anyone under the age of, like, 15 and sweating their fucking little prepubescent balls <laughs> off that's winning a game. There is no possible way that these six, seven, eight-year-olds have won a single game, and they'll look back on that and be like, wow, I wasted so much fucking time to not even win a single round. Hmm. Yeah, but isn't that the case? Charlie's only every... saying this as a man who's won hundreds of Fortnite games. I've literally won hundreds of Fortnite games, and I can promise you, no kid <laughs> is ever winning a fucking Fortnite game with all of those it... grown, sweaty, <laughs> greasy men on there. <laughs> but isn't that the case with every game from you know, soccer to chess to video games, where you know kids are just always going to be at a disadvantage to some dude in, in his mid-20s? They're yeah, but not the quite difference there is... Seven. They... Yeah, but the difference there is you're not playing that same thing for six or seven hours and getting constantly fucking spanked. <laughs> the other difference is you can level the playing field. Like if you're playing like chess or a sport, you play against other people, your skill level. Exactly. Or Whereas in Fortnite, it's, it's totally random. So you're saying we should have like a peewee Fortnite leaks? No, fuck them. Me- they need to learn a hard lesson <laughs> if they're not good enough. For- Fortnite needs two separate cues. One, you have to be 13 or under to join. You, you have, have to hilarious. register. You have to show a valid driver's <laughs> your license until you can Your parents have to sign play. you up for... Your parents have to mind. go on their website and sign you up for the kids' queue. You have to get a doctor's physical just to get acceptance. <laughs> That'd I- be awesome. They should do it. But I mean, don't don't games already do that with their ELO ranking stuff and the leagues and such? So in a way, yeah, you do that's why still other games with... probably don't have the problem. What do you mean other games? Fortnite that's doesn't Fortnite. have that. Oh, no. oh, okay. <laughs> that sucks for the kids then. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think they're gonna look back on it and be like, "Wow, this is a big fucking waste of so much time." Well, that was what was starting to kill the game right they added all these like balances to give kids a chance and it just made meant the game was a race to try to get one of those like overpowered things first yeah but i mean even still kids aren't gonna win with those overpowered things andrew like it's just not happening with the level of skill in fortnite from the like pros and like even people trying to be pros it's it's a blowout they will never win a single fucking round in that game hmm I don't know why that one's so popular. There's so many easier battle royales that they could have gotten into. But then why would they play well, it so much? If they're probably just because the art style and the popularity would be my guess. Hmm. I think it's the building. I think the kids really, really like the building aspect of That's it. That's true. It could also be the building. Yeah. I'm still... It'll never stop to amaze me the, 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 the injustice that we have to bear in this reality where Worms Armageddon is not an eSport, not a popular one, or one at all. <laughs> I don't understand. They, they just... Ki- Team 17 just came out with yet another shitty 3D Worms side-scrolling platformer version of it. I think, they w- I think they made a Worms Battle Royale. A 2D platformer Battle Royale is what they just made. Instead of just re-releasing Armageddon, and pay a bunch of fucking Twitch streamers to play it. How difficult could it be? Every game does it, Team 17. Set aside some money. It's true. Pay a bunch of streamers yeah. off to allot your game and play it for a few hours. Is that so hard? Unbelievable. Yeah, it's a good, good point. old worms. 
You just brought a, a hard nostalgia bomb to me back in the vein of uh, kids having shitty nostalgia. For a lot of middle school, there was like this free to play tanks game. It was like a yeah. very basic flash game. It was a it was a worms ripoff and it was tanks. Yeah. And thinking about it back then, I remember that game was so good. I would like go home and play it, too. And I was like, fuck, tanks is so good. But now that I think about it, I'm like, this game blows ass. It's just a basic bitch version of worms. It was <laughs> terrible. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Take that, me. <laughs> that's another thing that you have to suck up as a kid it was especially our generation you know if you didn't have enough money or if your parents didn't want to fucking dump money on a new game every week you just all you had were demo cds or demo oh, downloads basically demo were discs. Demo demos discs man, demos were in general demos baby demos aren't God. as big of a thing anymore because these days you know Someone can just put their game, the full game, on uh, Steam, and if you don't like it, you can just get a refund two hours yep. later. Whereas back in the, the day, you had, you know, if you wanted to try Serious Sam, you could only try it on one map with, like, two of the guns. I actually did a bunch of uh, research into this in college for, like, a, a game dev project I was doing. Uh, the entire landscape of how games is made has changed to where demos just don't make sense. Uh, first of all, you have, like, everything comes out in beta now. So if you are releasing a demo, it, the beta usually just counts as that. Then there's yeah. the fact that with digital distribution, your game can constantly be updated. So mm -hmm. it's better to put out a basic version of it and just keep adding to it rather than sending out a demo. Then there's like trials that, it, that it's too, like beta. basically putting out a, an actual just standalone demo doesn't really make a lot of sense for games by this point because there's so many other more efficient methods you can do with it's, your game it's two birds with one stone even it, it's a bigger advantage for game developers i assume rather than sending out demo cds or giving out demo codes to a select few just make it early access and make it free until the full release so that way you basically yep, early get free beta yeah. testers you don't have to pay a quality and assurance team anymore you can literally just let people play for free discover bucks for you and in the meantime they also get to play the game yeah, mm -hmm. early access, betas, uh, private keys for like influencers like it. The landscape of games has just changed so much that making a demo really doesn't doesn't sell. Game. I don't think a demo would even help sell a game by this point. No, nah, probably not. Yeah. No. Yet some still have it. I, I see it on the Amazon, um, the PlayStation Store and the Nintendo Store. You can sometimes see it's a oh, free playable demo. And oftentimes I just think, well, I don't want to fucking sink two hours into the demo and then have to start again if I do decide to buy the game, because a lot of them don't even carry over your save game or anything to the full version. See, uh, another, another reason problem. on it, another reason on it that applied to me growing up, for example, is um, when I was growing up, I didn't have my family didn't have a ton of money. So it was like if I got a video game, it was like one game for every I don't know, good chunk of months, and that game had to last. Mm. So I would play a ton of demos just to have different games to play. Like, I, I distinctly remember um, I played the Dead Rising demo. I forgot what came with my Xbox 360, but that was the only thing I had for a while, and I played the Dead Rising demo over and over and over because I wanted that game so badly. But you got really good at it, didn't you? I had the same oh, thing, I, I also, I was, I was constricted to a Worms demo, I don't remember which one it was. It was a, this one snow map, and it was the same map every single time, but I got good at it. And it was fun at the yep. time. Do you guys remember magazines would give you demo CDs with the magazine? To sell I the do. turd? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. man. Yep. I remember every single time I'd go to fucking GameStop or wherever, I'd open the magazine and the demo disc would just be gone. <laughs> It's <laughs> that fucking sucks. gone. Oh, poor Andrew with like his little, you know, <laughs> jagged rug, um, fucking shitty little rugs. And you have no <laughs> shoes. You just got done selling newspapers at the street and all the rich people spat at you and you finally have enough pocket change to buy a CD and it's stolen. Mm. <laughs> Man, I, I distinctly remember I had a fucking like dream. I had a Dreamcast and it had a fucking 10 games in one demo disc. And one of them, I think, was like Typing of the Dead or House of the Dead. Typing of the Dead, the classic. Yeah. And it was just it was just great to run through the first level over and over again. It's like, this is the same as the rest of the game. Why do I need the whole game? <laughs> because God, I, those. now I miss demos, even though they were dog shit. I miss demos. You now. know what I miss? 
those one CDs for a PC where we finally, at some point, we figured out how to emulate, you know, the Atari shit on PCs. And it led to this huge influx of uh, 400 games in one CDs where it's just nothing but emulations of the Atari games, but on your PC. And it was so just convenient and fun. You could play Mr. Pac-Man or Miss Pac-Man, whatever the fuck it is, where you have the slingshot and you molest him for the, throughout the whole game. Shadow Run. You know what I miss? I miss educational mm. games, like fourth grade, third grade, and fifth grade, like that oh, whole series. Oh, jump start and shit. Whatever that means, yeah. Oh, yeah. Those were the best. One that I actually do miss that you don't see anymore is I miss uh, sponsored Flash games. So, like, do you remember back when, like, uh, Nabisco had a mini golf game on their website and fucking, like, all these other brands like Coke would have, like, air hockey flash oh. games on their website and shit for kids? I'd play the fuck out of those. P PETA had one where you were supposed to, like, cook with raw materials and raw liver and such, didn't they? Woohoo! Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah. No, you well, PETA still sure has flash games it. now. PETA still has uh, Flash a, games. They have uh, yeah, anti-Pokemon Flash games you can play. Oh yeah, that one too. That's also great. That's Black and Bruised. That's the name yeah, of that one. Yeah, I played that. <laughs> and then they have a... Uh, is that what they call they it? They have a... Uh, yeah, Pokemon Black and Bruised. Why does yeah. it sound like it's some anti-slavery message? That sounds bad. Oh, it is. Oh. No, it, it is. But, when, when you play the game... When you, when you play the Pokemon Black and Bruised, at one point, there's a... Uh, like, you beat a... You win a fight, and a treasure chest pops up, and they go, Oh, wow, a treasure chest. I wonder what's inside. And when you open it, it's a YouTube link to a video of animal cruelty. <laughs> I, I, I played this whole game, and, and the characters go, My God, that's awful. <laughs> that's like the worst Rick roll if you send children a bunch of videos to animal torture. <laughs> I know. Hey, hey, here's a snuff film. Game. Oh, yeah, hey, look. I streamed the whole thing, and uh, I had to censor a lot of it, because that game goes fucking hard. It's imagine, the most mature Pokemon game ever made. <laughs> imagine uh, just the, uh, you know, the cops or f f some organization puts out a video game to teach little children about sexual assault. It's like, high score, rape video, here's your reward. <laughs> <laughs> this woman was assaulted and work. raped bloody. It's like, mommy. <laughs> I so just won my Fortnite game and now I'm watching War Crimes. <laughs> Bonus! <laughs> that would be awesome, dude, if you won Fortnite and it makes you watch like 9-11 footage of people screaming and jumping off the building. So what, what kind of an educational game could we make these days that would be in that vein where, you know, it's this sanctimonious, scarring experience for the kid? Uh... Mm. Like, what useless cause is there today? Well, maybe we could teach them internet safety. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Kaya, do you oh, have a, uh, maybe a starting point for internet safety? I do, but before we get to that segue, I, I like that idea. Like, you could have a kid and he has to learn how to, like, or she has to learn how to not upload nudes onto the internet. But the game <laughs> tells her... So the game is like, only fan simulator, and then she uploads nudes, and the game is like, high score! To teach you a lesson, we uploaded your nudes to your school message board and message all your friends. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> That'll and teach then it that connects bitch. to your Facebook and, you know, ropes and all of your connections on Facebook. And it's like, Becky got the high score last week. She's dead now because she killed herself after we uploaded her nudes. You don't want to end up like Becky, do you? Wow. Kaya just wants to make that game where it's that shooter that deletes files off your computer, except he wants it to ruin your life with everything. That's a thing. <laughs> well, don't lose Kaya's game then. Better learn. Yeah, just quick. don't lose, pussy. That's all you gotta do. <laughs> Dude, if you if you made that, people would play it. The don't lose this game, where if you do lose, it deletes your computer. That would be Ooh, a challenge. Yeah, that's a real game. Play. It is. That's a real game. There's a, there's a, it's like Galaga, it's a top-down shooter, and every enemy is a file on your computer, so when you do, when you, uh, when you destroy them, it deletes that file off of your computer. Does it And the best you part is that it, uh, yeah, it, when you kill the enemy, it says the name of the file it deleted. Wow. And, uh, the best part is it scans your entire hard drive, so it adds Windows files, too. So you could kill an enemy and just instantly, completely softlock your computer. Why would anyone play it, then? I don't know. 
Is it one of those prank games where you give it to your friend and they don't, you wait until they notice and they, you know, recognize some of the like, oh, file system 32.dll. Oh, well. Oh, uh- <laughs> anyway, speaking of internet safety, go to expressvpn.com slash official. You know the deal. I'm actually going to tell you guys about something frustrating, which is not ExpressVPN's fault, but Amazon's. I was on Amazon ordering shit because I just moved. I need a bunch of stuff like table, whatever, and a bunch of knickknacks like cat toys and such. The next day, I get an email from Amazon saying your account was hacked. We don't know how this hack happened, but don't worry. We canceled all the fraudulent orders that were made on your computer and refunded the money where possible. So I take a look at, I get freaked out because, you know, my bank account is linked to that shit. So is my credit card. I don't want my Amazon hacked. I log in and I realize there's nothing foul. No one robbed me. But all the orders I made yesterday disappeared. All the orders I made. So I figure, oh shit, these fucking dummies. Because I've been using a VPN. They thought that I had some random guy logged in from Uzbekistan or something into my Amazon account. And they immediately just assumed that I was hacked. And without consulting me decided, oh, let's just nuke this guy's account and all of his orders and payment processing. Because, you know, usually web... You you know, usually websites at least ask you, like, when you try a new login on Twitter, Twitter will email you saying, hey, here's a new login. Was this you? Yes. Okay, no problem then. Amazon skips that skip for some reason and immediately assumes that if you logged in from the next street or something from a different IP, you must have gotten hacked and also fuck you. No more orders. Now the fucked up part is they still build me, but I can't see the orders. And my order got <laughs> delivered to a neighbor, but it won't tell me what neighbor. And I don't want to go around the fucking entire apartment ringing every bell like, hey, do you have my cat toys? Oh, hello, sir. Do you have I've my cat to toys? It's annoying. So I call these fucking <laughs> assholes and they apologize and reinstated my orders. It took them three fucking days. Like, it's not already slow enough to get shit from China. Anyway... Amazon, fix your fucking shit, dude. More people use VPNs now. It's easy, especially with ExpressVPN. You literally just download it. You hit a button. If you want, optionally, pick a server wherever the fuck you want. There's like 190 countries on this planet. You can pick a server in each and every one of them. Do that. Download expressvpn.com slash official. You get three months for free of the yearly plan, which is already a great deal to begin with but you this way you get like a fourth of the price knocked off thanks to them sponsoring us expressvpn.com slash official it's also good to watch crap like naruto because i don't know why netflix does this again when i log into german netflix it has naruto but only on german only the german dub and only german subtitles okay which means I have to use my Express VPN again, the, my knight in shining armor. Thank God these motherfuckers sponsor us and I can log into the Canadian or US Netflix or whatever the fuck and get it in English. So thank you, expressvpn.com slash official. Go get it. Fuck region blocks in the ass, but maybe be careful on Amazon because those dumbasses apparently don't remember that VPNs are a thing. And you'll have to spend days with them on the customer support hotline and talking to some Indian guy on their support chat. ExpressVPN.com slash official. That was beautiful, Kaya. Yeah, that was beautiful. Kaya, I'm glad you brought up that Amazon thing because I've had that happen a good chunk of times where they're like, your package was delivered and I it's at the apartment like down the way and I have to walk all the way over there and fucking grab it. Yeah, sometimes they, they just get too lazy to walk to the top floor. So they just they don't even ring the bell and they pretend you didn't hear it and they just deliver it to the some random neighbor. And so now you have to look at who the fuck is Neuendorf. Okay, are you going yeah. Dorf? <laughs> You're looking at the and what? The, the first neighbor that they delivered it to didn't even have a his name on the bell because apparently they also moved new. So I had to just walk around. Stop this shit! I'm home. Or whatever. Yeah. Oh well. Oh well. I think that's more the fault of the delivery driver, though. Oh yeah, I mean everyone in all, involved in this chain of events, except for ExpressVPN fucked up express vpn did exactly what it was supposed to do it changed my ip i like it it's automatic i said it so it starts when my window starts i don't even think about it i didn't think i was gonna get locked out of my own account and have my orders just hidden from me and like, i'm on the phone too with this guy and they can see your orders which is weird and uh you know after verifying who you are they ask like okay and what's your name and where do you live and what's your postal code i need to verify who you are can you tell me the two-step verification yada yada and he's like okay so just so we can find it. What did you order yesterday? And I go, I don't fucking remember. It was 30 things. It's a shopping list. What the fuck do I know? It's like cat toys on a desk. 
and some other shit. I don't know if there's a sex toy. I don't know if there's an R. And he's like, well, I see an RC car here. It's like, yeah, what's with the judgment in your tone? What, I can't play with an RC car? What's your fucking deal? You, wait, you, what's with that you tone? ordered an RC car? <laughs> hmm? You ordered an RC car? Yeah, for my cat, so she can chase it around. Okay, I was gonna say, you've lost all rights to criticize Jackson's <laughs> Legos. <laughs> no, dude, I, I don't skip when it comes to my cats. I love her. I, I like playing with her, so I'm gonna get her an RC car. I'm also gonna get an RC boat because I want to take her to the beach and teach her to swim. So if she wants to chase around an RC boat, maybe that'll work. Got her a harness and mm -hmm. everything. She loves being outside. That's sweet. Mm. Do you walk your cat like a dog? Yeah. That's she awesome. loves it. Hmm? That's, uh, that's awesome. That's cute. Yeah, it is cute. <sighs> that's my rant. What do you guys hate this week? Mmm. Mm. Nothing jumps out at me as like something I've been very upset about this week. This week's just been kind of a relaxing, decent week of not much going on. Oh fuck you. Yeah. Um I hate the time it takes to drive long distances, not necessarily <laughs> the drive. Okay, yeah, I, I hate that yeah. teleportation doesn't exist too. Well, I don't know. It's, it's it's a specific annoyance, but it's like I don't mind driving. I drive I drive long distances often because I got friends who live far away, my parents and so that. But um so I I hate the feeling because it's happened to me a lot in this last week where let's say you're driving 4 hours and you go, "Ah, I've been driving for a long time. Let me check the GPS. How much longer do I have?" And you still have like two and a half hours. Mm. It's like, "Oh, fuck." You know, I, I guess I guess I hate when you get into something and time's passing and you're doing well and you think you've done a lot and then you check your progress and it turns out you still have a shitload left. Mm -hmm. That's what's been that's what's been bringing me down lately. Do you guys yeah. have any of that? Um, well, yeah, no one likes to wait a long time to get where they want to go. Yeah. No, but I mean, lately, has something, have you plateaued in something, do you think? I'll give you another example. I've been, uh, I've been doing, as I mentioned earlier, guitar for about the last year. And it's like, yeah, I've gotten better, and a lot of things are muscle memory. But I'll go, hey, you remember that song that was too hard? I should be able to, like, pr you know, start getting it now. And then, no, not at all. <laughs> Still can't do it. No, I, 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 I don't plateauing. beat myself up over that sort of stuff. Because at least it's, you know... Learning a skill takes long, but transportation is such a mundane fucking thing. I am actually surprised that people don't, you know, we don't work on that more compared to some other mm -hmm. scientific things that mankind focuses on. You'd think that getting places faster would be a major milestone for our species to solve. And then you look at it and it's still like, okay, how close are we to teleportation or to some light speed shit? And, you know, fucking even Elon Musk with a SpaceX shit still takes a month to arrive at the ISS. Holy shit, really? Wasn't it? Didn't they like... No, well, may maybe not a month, but... I don't know, Charlie, it takes longer Let's than see. the two seconds it should take to teleport at this point, don't you think? Uh, Kaya, Kaya, according to... Uh... Oh, wait, no, that's a, that's a different article. Shit, hang on. Okay, here in the chat, someone says it took 19 hours to rendezvous in orbit. Yeah, it says it takes usually about two days to get to the ISS on average. And then you look up, you know, the ISS is one thing, and then you have the celestial bodies. It takes like, what, how, how many months to get to, the, to Mars? That sort of stuff sucks, but that's just, that's the big stuff too. I mean, that's what scientists are working on to get better drives and longer distance drives and such but here on an earthly level can we get some can we finally have a better invention than fucking cars when did we invent cars must be at least 100 years by now right it's time for at something least. new yep huh? i agree i think cars are outdated now i think we need to focus more on something faster and more efficient mm, yeah like something man also make wormholes worm wormholes yeah Wait. So have like underground tunnels and give each person a pod or something that travels at, uh, I don't know, 500 miles an hour. Not the shit that we currently have. Cars, bikes, are you kidding? Bikes? How are bikes a thing? I mean, they look cool, I get it and everything, but you crash on that thing, you're dead. 
You're basically a bunch of ham that someone splattered on the ground. You, you can't get away from a bar bike crash uh, from a motorcycle accident with anything but a severed spine. I don't get... I just don't get the... Uh the fandom the I, only I reason I, for motorcycles is to look cool there is yeah. no other possible benefit to riding a motorcycle yeah i'm not sure how to traffic. phrase it but just it's kind of astounding how many people are into motorcycles with just how preposterously unsafe they are like, oh good fucking I, god i get the appeal if, if you're in a car extremely convenient I get that. It is, but but like think about it. If you're in a car and you get into a, a crash, say you you run into a guardrail at 30 miles an hour, it's like yeah, that would suck. But for the most part, you'd probably be alive, especially if you wear your seatbelt and your car has a good safety rating. If you do that on a motorcycle, bye bye to your legs. Enjoy your front yeah. flip. Like what the fuck, man. <laughs> Isn't there also a thing that, that apparently, this might be a myth that I just read on Twitter and I don't know why I'm repeating it, but isn't there a thing apparently that mo motorcycle helmets make you somewhat less safe because it's so big that if you land with it on the pavement, it actually snaps your neck almost immediately? I don't well, know if it's real, but it makes sense. I, I don't know if you've yeah. ever worn motorcycle helmets, but when I was a kid, I used to do like four wheeling stuff. So I was always wearing helmets like that. And that shit will absolutely throw your, fa your fucking head around easily. Mm. I still Europe, feel it'd probably be a... Uh, I feel like it'd be a net positive to safety, though, because just slamming your head on concrete is just instant death, you know? So even if you true. get bad whiplash, I'd rather have that than just brains being scrambled. Again, we need something something better. There has to be, like... A lot of technology that we have, or a lot of things, you look at, and it just hasn't progressed since the day it was invented. Cars are one... Like, toilet paper. It's 2020, we still really don't have a better way to wipe yeah, our ass, to fuck. clean our asses than to take a piece of uh, tissue and run it into our ass crack and muddle around and shift it around until there's no more brown. Or using a bidet which just sprays the shit around you anyway. How come? Nothing is, nothing is good in this fucking market, Kaya, especially in the US. First of all, in the US, bidets are not common. And it's like a bidet, even if it's not perfect, is such a such a step up from just toilet paper and then second of all you get you get personal wipes and it's like none of those are flushable they claim they are but they're not none of them are easy to get rid of so either a you flush it and ruin your plumbing yeah. or b you let it sit in your trash can and you just got a like faint poopy smell in your bathroom all the time because of it and it's like all of our toilet paper brands, no matter how soft they are, are the fucking worst goddamn thing in the world. And then the, the softer ones, which are a little more flaky, leave like those little flecks on your ass. It's like fucking we need a better way to wipe our asses. It's 2020 for the we love of God. need a better way for all of things, man. It's the fucking people going around with the grand unified theory of science and maybe one day we can have a warp drive yeah cool why do i still still have to scoop my cat's poop can someone tell you that why are buses still a thing can't we have like jetpacks at this point where are the scientists why are the kickstarters for this sort of shit where are the geniuses the inventors why don't we have a modern day a tesla or a turing to come up with sh cool shit Charlie, you're a you're a pioneer in the field of ass wiping. What's your optimal solution to like? No, he isn't. What's the best? Are you what? dissing me? Well, you both are, but I, I know I'm mentioning this because Charlie's brought up stories on the show about like wiping his ass with his hand and smelling it. So I figured, oh, <laughs> maybe in his years, <laughs> he's come up with like uh, an optimal way to wipe your ass, like something in his brain. I think at some point you boys just have to accept we found it. Like with doors, nothing's ever going to replace a door. It solves <laughs> every problem you could ever have with like, you know, privacy or keeping things in and out. Door is always going to be there. And I think the same with toilet paper. There is no better way other than a bidet. But as far yeah. as a bidet or toilet paper goes, I don't think there's anything else. You can't like air dry it or anything. That's I think you have a limited part. vision. <laughs> I, think, I think you're thinking small. <laughs> well, if we did master wormholes, you could probably like plug a small wormhole on the shit crusts and just like TP them out. <laughs> We're no. just shitting onto an alien home world. All of our toilets just connect us to an alien planet where our shit lands. 
like anything, man. I'll I'll settle for anything. Even aren't they like shit eating bugs? So in science, uh, sorry, in medicine, they use those little maggots sometimes to clear dead tissue, right? On a burn victim, for example, they'll pile a bunch of maggots on the person, and the maggots will eat the dead skin and leave alone the fresh one. They use that to oh, clean. Didn't know that. Yeah, yeah they do. I didn't it's, know that either. No, it's a cool thing. They you can literally put those some of those maggots on dead tissue, and it'll eat around the healthy and still alive tissue. And it's really cool. So why not? That's kind of awesome. Yeah. Find a bug that does that, but with my ass and shit that only eats the shit and leaves my well, ass pristine. Last Kaya, thing I, I don't, want is I don't want to bug jam in bugs ass. in my ass every time I take a shit. You know, I wouldn't mind. No, think about it. You hit the flush flushing handle but instead of water a bu an avalanche of ants comes out cleans your ass <laughs> and then goes it's down the pipe in your butt hole. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's like a bidet and it fires fucking bugs into your anus <laughs> what if the aim's <laughs> off though and it just starts getting all over your dick and stuff ew oh, no God. again it's supposed to ignore human tissue just the shit so if, it, if you accidentally hit your dick all it does is suck up all the little smegma and then still go down the drain well, Caius might might be onto something. Instead Thank of you. bugs, we make nanobots. And and when you take a shit, you have a little vial of liquid. Uh -huh. And you just pour a little bit on your butt cheeks, and they have, like, sensors, and they're, like, seeking shit. And they, like, crawl <laughs> on your butt cheeks and, and eat all the poop. And then they go away. That'd be awesome. Seeking shit. <laughs> that's, that's a Terminator I never want to see. That's the worst movie. <laughs> Uh, oh, that's a good little um, cave caveat here from our Patreon chat. Violet Primate says, what if the bugs detect the shit inside your ass and start crawling inside your anus? That's when you get the nanobots designed to fight the shit eating bugs. Yeah, fail no, safe. Nanobots, you just kill nanobots. I, no. nanobots are going to solve everything. I'm telling you. I don't, I don't want to fuck a civil war on my asshole. Just I want to clean. If it takes nanobots, then so be it. But just something. Some technological improvement. Come on. Showering too. I like showering, but it has to be a better way these days to get the stink off you, you know? Well, I, I, I just don't, don't think there be, is. I don't, yeah, I don't know what it would be in any way more efficient than washing Again, your body a, with a, water. A pool of bugs to eat the dirt off of you. <laughs> Kaya just wants an excuse to live in filth amongst the insects of the world. That's all it is. <laughs> yeah, I you can have your bugs. Filth. I'll have my nanobots. All right, so, so Kaya's got his bugs. I'll take my nanobots. Charlie, what small, like, beings would you want to make your life easier if you had Midgets. control of them? <laughs> I'll probably just stick with modern inventions because I just don't see a better solution. <laughs> You wouldn't have, like to have a harem of little Oompa Loompas just tending to your ass? Yeah, like Willy Wonka. No, that'd be terrible. I'd be it's so ticklish and stuff. I wouldn't want anyone touching my ass but me. True. <laughs> but then again, that, that's like a dignity you have to give up in old age, Charlie. I mean, sooner or later, all the three of us, we're going to have to live through the indignity of having a doctor put his finger in our assholes to feel around and rummage around for a prostate. Which... Again, it's one of those things where I don't even know if a prostate is a thing or if it's a global conspiracy so doctors can just finger you. It's like, do we even know if breast cancer is real or did they just make it up so could, they can fondle our girlfriends when they go in for a checkup? Hey, you're starting to sound like some Facebook shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be the next thing. Forget about 5G. Forget about the Earth being flat. <laughs> Fuck the moon hexing. Yeah. It's Doc all about whether or not cancer's real. <laughs> what if doctors are all actually fucking perverts and all of these procedures that, have, that they do, don't they sound just suspiciously sexual? Like, oh, I have to fondle your tit for half an hour so I can find a lump and your balls, and I might have to put a finger in your ass too. Hmm. I've seen that before in porn. I don't know. No? No, no one on board with my conspiracy. <laughs> can't say, can't say I see too much merit in this one. Hmm. Oh, as opposed to what the five G one. Mine is as meritful well, as the rest. Well, hey, now we don't say those words around these parts. Oh. Uh, should we wrap, or do we have anything else? How long has it been? A little over an hour. Your call. You got anything else? No, I just I I can't help but thinking about bugs and robots eating my poop now.
Okay, well, that's fair enough then. Yeah. yeah. Oh shit, Jackson's not here. I was waiting for him to take us out. Oh. <laughs> Mm. Oh, yeah, for those pinging me with that one story about the German cult leader. So last week we talked about cults, and I mentioned that Australia and Germany don't seem to have many. I've not read this yet, but thank you for pinging me. Apparently there's a cult in Germany started by an ex-WoW uh, player, World of Warcraft pro, who was apparently the best paladin, mm -hmm. and he started a cult in Germany, so maybe we can touch on that next week. I already know about Orf that guy. Athene. Oh. Oh. Why don't we uh, do it for the bonus? What? That we're recording tomorrow. No, maybe, or if Charlie knows about it, you can, he can tell it now. I don't know what he's up to these days, but he's running cryptocurrency scams, and he's just a general fucking weirdo. Well, it sounds smart. But okay. Yeah, I mean, it was smart. I think he made a lot of money off of people. Mm -hmm. As every cultist does. Okay, maybe we can talk it about it on tomorrow's uh, bonus for which Jackson should be back. Yeah. And since he's not back yet, Charlie, want to take us out? Yeah, thanks everyone for uh, watching this episode of the official podcast. I think this was 193. And uh, uh, you can find more bonus content on patreon.com slash the official podcast. And we'll see you next time. Bye, everyone. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.